you know, anatomy videos are great, but the only issue with them is the fact you have to cover the body from a limited number of drawing styles or perspectives, lest the video becomes half an hour long. And as much as my YouTube retention would like it, I'm not going to keep you guys here for any longer than we need to. With that said, today we're going over our in-depth guide to drawing arms. Properly drawing the arm requires you to have good bone construction, as the bones are what provides rigidity to our forms. We're going to quickly go over the names of the bones, as well as what they do and where they are. The bone running from our shoulders down to our elbow is the humerus, and this is the longest bone in the arm, so just when we're proportioning it out, we should remember that our biceps, as well as our shoulder, is going to be longer than our forearm in total. Speaking of the forearm, unlike the biceps, it's actually going to be made of two bones. The first being the ulna, which is going to run from our elbow to the back of our wrist. The other bone, our radius, is going to run from inside our elbow to our thumb. Depending on the rotation of the wrist and what angle we're looking at, these two will actually rotate and overlap over each other as you twist and rotate the wrist. Now, because this rotation actually changes the arm pretty significantly, I'm going to cover the arm from multiple angles in this video just so you get a proper grasp of it all. And since we're already drawing the arm from a, a couple different angles, I also decided to draw it in a few different styles just so you guys would know how you go about it depending on whether you're drawing it for a comic, you're painting it, or you know, you're sketching it. Starting with the arms in a profile view, we already have the bone structure we created when I was drawing in the ulna, radius, and humerus, respectively. Notice how the arms are neutral right now, neither the bicep or tricep is really flexed, it's more of a resting state, and our wrist isn't rotated so our bones aren't overlapping. Now, don't worry, later on in this video we're going to show the tricep and the bicep getting flexed respectively. More important in the later stage of this video, I'm going to show you what we do when we have to bend our arm at the elbow or straighten it out. One thing you should know when you're drawing the biceps and triceps is that you want to have only one flex at a time. That's because the triceps work to push things away from your body, whereas the biceps work, in addition with your back, to pull things towards your body. Moving down our arms, we're coming to the multitude of muscles that make up our forearms. Now, the exact names of most of these really isn't too relevant. The most prominent of these muscles is the brachioradialis, I don't know if I'm saying that right, and the various extensors that run under it. These extensors are responsible for the movement of your fingers. If you actually place your hand on top of your forearm and move it, you'll feel a little wiggle inside it, and that's your extensors doing their job. Pay attention to how I'm running these down the forearms. I'm not keeping them perfectly vertical. I'm actually rotating them just because it's a little bit more anatomically accurate, and it looks a little strange when you leave them all parallel. All right, and finally, moving on to the last major muscle of the forearm, this is going to be what's underneath our elbow. Now, we already have the bone structure from before. However, I want to quickly go over how the radius and the ulna interact. Now, when drawing the elbow, you should really think of it as a pulley system. So the ulna, one of the bones in our forearms, is going to be in between two parts of the radius. And it's going to look similar to this. Now, we can round this out and make it a little bit more accurate, but this is just a great way of remembering how you should actually be drawing this. Now, moving on to the last major muscle of our forearm, it's going to be this bottom portion. Oh, a useful way of looking at this is similar to a ham, right? Uh, hams are asymmetrical in that one side protrudes more than the other. If you're going to draw out the forearm without using reference or detailing it out completely, this is the most important step that you get right. Now, the last detail we have to get for the forearm is to draw in the anconius. This is going to be towards our elbow, and it is a small but critical detail in making it believable. Now, I'm not much of a digital painter, but for this, I'm going to use a bluish green desaturated background just to make my skin tone pop a little bit more because it's slightly desaturated. One thing I want to point out right now is when you want to use complementary colors uh, in that colors across the color wheel, you want to have one more saturated than the other. The other one should be kept fairly desaturated, while the other one you don't want to go all the way towards full saturation, but you want to keep it 80, 70, 90 percent of the way there. This is a very common mistake when people are working with complementary colors is to just blast the saturation on both of them. Don't do it, it doesn't work well. Now, this isn't a color theory video, so I'm just going to move on to the next example. Now, for the second example, I'm going to be twisting the wrist, and you'll see that the bones are actually going to overlap now. One thing this is also going to do is increase the definition of the extensors as well as the other forearm muscles. And what I also want you to pay attention here is the fact that our arm is bent, meaning our bicep is going to be flexed, whereas our tricep is going to be elongated. So we're going to have to show more definition in the bicep as opposed to the tricep, which we're going to keep fairly neutral. So a quick guide to know how far you should place your bicep from this inside crease of your arm is to do between one and three fingers of the actual figure you're drawing 
and that's a safe amount of distance. One thing I'm doing slightly different than our last example is I'm making this one very muscular and defined. Uh, I figure this is the best opportunity, and because I'm using ink as the medium, I feel like it's going to have the best chance to shine. So after I have the pencils down, I decide which lines I want to keep, and those that I want to keep, I'm going to go over with this ink pen. Now, you could use a micron pen, you could also use uh, other various dip pens. This is just what I prefer because I can get the most line width variance. Now, as for lighting this, I'm doing a pretty simple top-down lighting. I'm also not creating huge big blackouts just because I want you to be able to read this. However, with inks, a lot of the times you will want to put these harsh shadows that cover a lot of the form. And pay attention to my forearm here, how I'm changing it slightly because the wrist is rotated. Moving on to our third example, we're covering the arm from the inside. For the last example, I was inking, so I was using this really smooth paper as it helps you get proper line weights. However, for this one, because I'm sketching it with just paper and pencil, I'm going for something with a little bit more of a tooth. And while I'm drawing this, I'm also keeping the pressure on the pencil very light. I want almost e every mark I make on this page to be erasable with a kneaded eraser and not leave an indent. There's a couple different ways of holding your pencil to achieve this. Holding it further back generally means less control, but less pressure. So because the figure is raising his arm, the chest strands are going to come up too, which is going to change the shape of the chest. It should look like this. Now, from this angle, I really want you to keep in mind that ham analogy I gave for the forearm earlier. This is because we're not going to see too many extensors from this angle, and there's less definition. It's not strictly necessary to have a bunch of different types of leads when you're sketching like this. However, it is going to make it a little bit easier to not put any indents on the page as we're shading this in. All right, moving on to our last example, we're going to be drawing the triceps, and it's going to be from the back. Now, as we've always done, we're going to first draw in the bones, and we're just going to draw in our deltoids like so. Now, for the analogy of the triceps that I found very useful is to think of them as a tooth, especially from this angle, where our triceps are going to be flexed. You can really see clear definition of the tooth shape. However, it's not perfectly parallel with our elbow, right? It's at a slight angle where the exterior of the arm is higher than the interior. And one thing to point out, similar to our ham analogy from before, is that the interior of the arm is going to protrude out more than the exterior. Now, from this angle, we're going to see a little bit of the brachial radialis, and we're also going to see our extensors. However, I'm not doing complete definition for them because our wrist isn't super rotated. Now, unlike our first illustration, I'm going to be using a darker skin tone. For this, it's more important to focus on highlights than shadows. Now, for this, it really just takes experience. I recommend you use reference as always, especially when you're drawing things closer to reality. You know, a lot of the times you could get away with not using reference in like line art, but for this I strongly recommend it. Now, that was a pretty intense few minutes. It took a lot of research. I wanted to make sure I got the forms really dialed in for you guys for this video and make sure everything's clear before I started rendering it out. So if you appreciate it, subscribe. We also got a video coming out on hands sometime next week, Friday the latest. So what did we learn? Only the triceps or the biceps should be flexed at a time. You shouldn't flex both. And when you're flexing one, it largely depends on whether your arm is straight or not. There are a ton of little muscles in the forearm that we could render out. However, a lot of the times these are going to blend in together. However, as we rotate our wrist, they're going to become more defined. All right, guys, I appreciate you sticking to the end. Feel free to check out this video from last week. 